Hi everyone, Greg James from Greg James Fishing World and I'm here today and it's a sad occasion because I'm wrapping up and packing up my beautiful big six and a half metre boat because I'm going back to work and that's a sad state. But I'll run through a few tricks that I've learned. So I've got the boat in the shed and I'm about to disconnect the batteries, get a few other little things done so when I come back in a week or so, the boat's all ready to go. A lot of people do it the other way around. I don't think so much. I think what you should do is pack your boat up so as soon as you get here, the weather's good, you get to your shack or you tow it over to your favourite fishing spot or boat ramp, then the thing is all ready to go. So what I've done is I've washed the boat down, I'll show you where I've stowed my gear in just a moment, and now I'll run through a few tricks, like I said, with the battery. So the first thing I do is over here, if I get the uh, camera focused on the oil well, basically I've now got fuel and oil to uh, run me for at least two more trips, so I'm all ready to go when I next land. Now I'm going to go down here and disconnect my batteries. I run two batteries, not just because it's a fairly big boat, but I've never been stuck out in the ocean. I've come close a couple of times and I tell you what, it's a lonely place to be and this little black duck, much as I love the ocean, I don't want to live on it or die on it for that matter. So I carry two batteries, I've even got a spare one down there which is probably overkill, but you just never know. So, I'll now disconnect those two batteries just by taking the uh, leads off the top so that the boat doesn't short out. This boat's got an underfloor fuel tank. Um, I don't want electrical storms to hit the shed and create a short that it sparks a fire. So, what I've got here is two batteries in their waterproof cases. I've left this case top on just to show the variance. There are the two leads. I've got a, a setup here where these are marine batteries, heavy duty, don't want to muck around. I've got a 130 horsepower engine on the back, I couldn't pull start that in a pink fit. So you need plenty of power to crank it up and I change these over every three years. They're not cheap, but then again when you need them to start, you want them to start every time. So there's plenty of power uh, from these marine batteries to turn that engine over and uh, get it fired up and get you out of trouble if a storm blows up or you have an injury on board. So you've got little safety straps, little, um, they're like uh, seat belts and batteries really. You rip off the top um, and there you can see it. I keep the terminals nice and clean. Uh, you've got positive, you've got negative. They're linked so that uh, both batteries work off each other. And I run them, when I'm running on distance, I have both switched on and then I'll alternate it just to make sure they both work accordingly. So what I do is I disconnect these two uh, clamps here and the same on this side, keep them away from each other um, and keep them nice and dry until next time. And you know where I don't put that? Back on the battery. What I do, I drop them in there, drop them in the battery cover and I know that's where they are. So a little shifter, stainless steel shifter, so you don't leave any bits of metal on your, um, that's a really important point, uh, little bits of rust that might come off your, um, put that down in there, take that one off there, and put them well away from the terminal so there's no chance of any shorting happening. Okay, and you know what I do with this? I stow it just down there out of the way so no one sticks their big heavy foot, wolf head foot on it. And you know it's really important because they'll be there next time. Because when I come back and the weather's great and the blueies are crawling or the fish is happening, I don't be sitting around running around looking for a spare cap for my um, batteries. So I've got a couple, a couple of spares. Always carry spares. So there they are. They look unimportant, but I tell you what, you only ever need them once to be where they should be. So disconnect those. Put them out of the way where they're out of harm. Put them in a spot where they're out of harm's way. Then if you zoom back in there, you'll see two in good condition marine batteries. Everything disconnected. Everything dry. Nice and stored. All locked away. So, there we have it. The battery's ready to go. All I need to do is reconnect them and I'm ready. All my gear's been washed at the moment in South Australia. It's crab season. Blue crab season. Oh, and I've got a f***ing clamp. Anyway, if you zoom back over there, you'll see that I'm all ready to go next time. I've got the trusty esky, the big esky to put the uh, put the blueys in, the crab nets. You can uh, run three per person per boat or three per person per jetty, but you've got to have your floats on them and you've got to have your name tags on them. So always fish legal. The rules are there for a reason. And you can see the rest of the boat looks pretty well organised. Got my fishing rods over here because this time of the year it's uh, fishing for gar and surface other surface fish. All clean, ready to go, stowed away so they won't jump around. And the boat's uh, pretty well ready to be locked up and put to bed. And then away we go next time.
tight lines and see you next time on Greg James Fishing World.